Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the 2016 Jeep Cherokee. Now usually I'd go into a long spiel about the different trims and all aspects of the car, but this is a Jeep and as the advertising suggests, we need to get some off-road testing in. The Jeep Cherokee Latitude that we're in has all-wheel drive and a 3.2 liter V6 producing 271 horsepower and 239 pound-feet of torque. Weighing in at over 4,000 pounds, it's not the most fuel-efficient SUV in its segment with 19 MPG City and 26 MPG Highway, but it's certainly one of the most potent and has a class-leading 4,500 pounds of towing capacity. Considering the size of the engine and the weight of the vehicle, the fuel economy story isn't too bad, thanks in part to a 9-speed automatic transmission very similar to the unit used in the Chrysler 200. As far as practicality, rear legroom is sufficient, however cargo space is a bit low for this segment, as much as 20 cubic feet less than some of its direct competitors, with the seats folded, and only 4 more cubic feet than the smaller Jeep Renegade. But enough about practicality, let's talk about the many off-road features. And today is actually probably one of the worst days uh, I could be possibly testing a all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, but luckily I am in this Jeep. I will say, you know, last week I was in the Toyota RAV4 and had I been in the RAV4 this week, I know for a fact I wouldn't have actually come out here. Uh, it just doesn't have the clearance to get out here, and the all-wheel drive system wasn't quite as good. This has been able... I've actually carved a new path out in the snow here. No one has been driving out here uh, because the snow's gotten really deep, uh, and I didn't have a problem getting out here. Sure, it was sliding around a little bit, but it made it out here. So what I've been doing is just kind of going down this hill that I usually test the all-wheel drive vehicles on uh, to see if they can go up it. And so I've been just trying to pack down the snow on it so we can actually test it out and try and go up and over it. Um, conditions are pretty bad and this is on all season tires, so I don't imagine it ever actually getting over it. Uh, if I come to a stop on it, it'll even start to slide down. So that means the tires can't even hold it with the brakes all applied. So in that case, I mean, you know, it's it's not looking good for it to actually get over it, but I think with a little momentum, we'll be able to do it. So just to demonstrate that here, I come to a stop. So I did stop on it, and then now it's just kind of sliding down. So it's a pretty steep incline and covered in snow, which has gotten starting to get packed down. But the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle is pretty cool. And so right now we are in snow mode. Uh, there's four modes here. We've got all-wheel drive uh, auto. And so that, of course, lets the computers do all the work. It optimizes traction uh, based on the different sensors throughout the vehicle. Uh, but we've got it in snow. And so what snow does is it puts 60% of the torque to the front tires, 40% of the torque to the rear tires. And it really tries to eliminate slip. So when you start to have wheel slip, uh, you know, that's not good on snow. And so this is for loose surfaces and it'll try to eliminate that. And I've also put it down into a four wheel drive low mode. And so this is with the Jeep Active Drive 2, uh, you add on the four wheel drive low mode. And what that does is it gives you a 2.92 gear reduction, giving you a crawl ratio of 47.8 to one with the V6 engine, uh, 56 to one, I believe, with the inline four cylinder engine. So you can get a lot of torque, uh, great for towing or, you know, off-road situations where you're kind of just crawling along like we're doing right now. Now you may hear the brakes kick in when I am going around a corner and trying to accelerate or trying to accelerate up a hill. And what that is, is the brake lock differential. And so what it's doing is it's trying to eliminate wheel slip there uh, in order to send more torque to the other wheel. So if one wheel starts to spin and you've got an open differential, you're sending uh, basically no torque to either wheel and you can lock up that spinning wheel and that allows you to send more torque to the wheel that actually has traction. So you may hear the brakes kicking in there. Um, I didn't notice that in the RAV4. I don't know if it actually has a feature or not, but it seems to work pretty well on this. I mean, you will definitely hear it, uh, but that's kind of a good thing. You want to, you know, know that it's actually working um, and it's actually helping you out and accelerate over this. Now there is also a sport mode, and so when you put it into sport mode, what it does is it sends 60% of the torque to the rear and 40% of the torque up front. And so you get a little rear bias, um, you know, a little bit sportier uh, acceleration, and a little bit sportier handling, you're going to actually have slightly quicker shifts as well. So it's going to kind of change up a few things when you do put it into that sport mode. And then finally, there is a sand and mud mode. And in sand and mud, the important thing is to maintain momentum because once you stop, you'll basically just bury yourself. 
And so what sand and mud does is it allows for wheel slip. Uh, so it kind of, you know, it gets a little looser with the traction control system to allow for wheel slip because you want to maintain momentum. And if you have the throttle getting killed from traction control or the wheels getting braked from traction control, you're going to slow yourself down out in the mud and then you're going to end up getting yourself stuck. So that's ideally set up for you to be able to maintain momentum. Uh, and then the snow mode is all about, you know, traveling really slow in really loose surfaces and making sure that you don't have wheel slip uh, so that you can accelerate across it and of course use those braking differentials open differential but you use the brakes in order to send more torque to the wheel with more traction now the Jeep Trailhawk uh, actually has a locking rear differential this doesn't have the locking rear um, so that is one benefit and also has all-terrain tires as standard whereas this is on all season tires which as you can see slide down that hill Actually, I was having a hard time just standing on that hill. I was walking up it, uh, and I've got these like snow boots on, and I was having a trouble just walking up it. So honestly, it's really steep, really slick, and very challenging to go up. All right, so the moment we've been waiting for, can it make it over the hill? Uh, and one of the things I didn't mention, when you put it in sand or mud mode, it can put up to 100% of the torque to the rear axle. So it's capable of disconnecting the rear axle, meaning 100% of the torque to the front, and it's capable of sending all of that torque to the back. So it can send the torque to the axle with the most grip. I've got it in snow here, which is a 60-40 front rear split uh, in four wheel drive low. Traction control is in this disabled mode, uh, but it, it does use that brake lock differential. So first we're gonna try creeping up over this hill, which I do not anticipate working out. The tires aren't gonna be able to do it. And you know, the conditions are just super slick. So this is probably unfair in comparison uh, it definitely is unfair in comparison to the other tests i've done and there you can see uh getting stuck as soon as it starts to go up oh actually it's it's gripping and going up a little bit wow wow well i'm impressed honestly <laughs> that it even got that far uh using those brake differentials um started to go up the hill and you you could see in here uh, it would start to spin and then it would lock that up send more torque to the other side that's actually pretty cool you know these conditions are super unideal I'm gonna put it into drive uh, I'm gonna give it a little speed and see how it does with some speed trying to get over Oh, we're just spinning come on And we are so close, uh, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be able to get over there. Some smoke from our exhaust. All right, so I'm going to give it as much speed as I can get. And we are going to get over that hill because I believe in this vehicle. It's honestly pretty impressive. Yeah! <laughs> we did it. All right. Pretty impressive. Honestly, like these conditions are terrible. And the fact that it can even get over that hill, even with, you know, a good amount of momentum is impressive. It's got two open differentials to deal with and all season tires. So it's got a lot working against it. And yet the all wheel drive system has the intelligence to figure it out and get you over the hill. So pretty impressive overall. I do want to try out putting it in sand mode and seeing if that helps at all just by the fact that it can send more torque to the rear axle uh, and see how that does. So we'll put it in neutral, pop it over into sand mode, all right, back up a little bit. And all right, with a little bit of momentum. It is not going to go over there. Um, so what if we put it into snow mode now? Nope, it just doesn't have the traction. Okay. Well, put it in reverse. Go back down our hill. So I'm going to put it in sand and mud mode uh, and give it a little bit more speed and try and get over this hill. nicely done very cool 
Overall, I really have enjoyed driving it. You know, it's got plenty of power. It's got a solid all-wheel drive system. Like I said before, you know, if I had been in the RAV4 this week instead of this Jeep, I wouldn't have even gotten out here and I wouldn't have done an off-road test uh, because it just didn't have the ground clearance. The all-wheel drive system wasn't quite as good as this. Uh, so, you know, it's been fun to drive this thing. And, you know, it's certainly not the, the most practical for some of the aspects. It doesn't have as much cargo space as its competitors and the fuel economy isn't quite there. But, you know, if you need the power, uh, if you need the towing capability, 4,500 pounds, that's quite a bit. Um, and you need the ability to go off the beaten path uh, and actually get where you're going. This is certainly a vehicle that's capable of it. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.